Hello everybody and welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Anna, on this beautiful, beautiful Christmas day. I've got some lovely stories for you today. Very special day, our Christmas day. And I know everybody celebrates it differently and some people don't celebrate it. But in my family, we do celebrate it. And it's a lovely, cheerful, joyful day spent with friends and family. Today's story is extra special. It's a true story. I know, it's not a lot of them, but it really, really did happen. So it's not a story, it's the truth. Let's see. The Owl Who Came for Christmas. And the story was written by John Hay and illustrated by Gary Parsons. You can see the setting of the story is a forest. The owl who came for Christmas. It was night time in the forest. Rosie the screech owl was out hunting. She spotted something wriggling on the forest floor. It was a delicious earthworm. She swooped down and picked it up. You can see it's in her claws there. I'll save this one for dinner, she said, and she hid it in a hole in the trunk of a fir tree. As the sun came up, she snuggled deep in the branches and she fell asleep. So the same fir tree where she hid the earthworm, she went up into the branches and she's snuggling in there. When Rosie woke, she knew something was wrong. There was a roaring sound. The tree was swaying. And then, boom, it fell to the ground. Rosie was frightened. She squeezed her little body tight against the tree trunk and shut her eyes so she looked just like part of the tree. Oh my goodness. <gasps> she must have been so scared. She doesn't know what it is. Someone dragged the tree through a netting machine, pulling the branches tight against the trunk. Rosie was trapped. She's inside that tree and it's covered in a tight net. Do you know what's going to happen to the tree? Why did they put a net over it? Let's see. Rosie heard chopping sounds and soon there were lots of trees being loaded into the back of a lorry. The engine rattled and the lorry rumbled away from the forest and down a long road. But poor Rosie was still nestled inside the tree, riding away on the lorry. The next morning, Rosie heard voices near her tree. How about this one, Lily? It's really fresh. And it smells like the forest, Mum. Can we decorate it today? 
the family carried the tree to their car and tied it to the roof. Rosie felt the car moving and heard the sounds of the city. Where am I? wondered Rosie. This is not the forest. So this family went to buy their tree, not realizing that Rosie's inside. Mum, Lily and Ethan carried the tree into their house. They opened their box of Christmas decorations and Lily took out her favourites. Baubles shaped like owls. I love owls, said Lily. I'm going to put them everywhere. Lily peeked into the branches of the Christmas tree. A little face stared back at her. That's funny, said Lily. I, I thought I saw... Rosie shut her eyes, squeezed back against the trunk and pretended she was part of the tree. She's scared. She's never been this close to humans. She doesn't know what they will do to her. After decorating the tree, Mum, Dad, Lily and Ethan sat down for their dinner. But Rosie the Owl had no dinner. It was days since she had eaten the worm she had caught in the forest. She squeezed through the branches and peered out into the room, looking for snacks. I'm just going to look at the Christmas tree again, said Lily after dinner. She remembered she did see something, didn't she? She skipped through the house and then stopped in her tracks. Lily looked at Rosie and Rosie stared back. Mum! Look! called Lily. There's a bauble moving in the tree. Mum went to look. Rosie heard her footsteps and turned her head. Mum jumped. That's not a bauble, she said. That's a, a real, live, tiny owl. What are we going to do? asked Ethan. Should we help her to get out? asked Lily. No, said Dad. Let's try not to frighten her. They opened the garden doors near the tree, turned off the lights and went to bed. Perhaps the little owl would just fly away into the night. But later, when Dad tiptoed into the room, he found Rosie perched at the very top of the tree, fast asleep. They were hoping that she would leave by herself. I 
think she had other plans. Next morning, Mum called the local wildlife centre. You'll never believe this, she said, but we've got a little owl living in our Christmas tree. An owl in a Christmas tree? I need to see this, said the wildlife expert. She brought some food for the owl and sat, set it down amongst the branches. Oh, good, thought Rosie. I was really peckish. She's so hungry. After her meal, Rosie fell, felt sleepy. She didn't mind when the wildlife lady picked her up and gently put her in a box. When Rosie woke up, she was outside. It was dark and it was hunting time. She hopped onto the edge of the box and looked around. There was a plate with some more food on the ground. I'll just have a quick snack before I go, she thought. Later that evening, when Lily and Ethan went out into the garden, the owl had gone. Next day, it was Christmas Eve. The children were hanging their stockings. The Christmas tree was covered with beautiful decorations. But there was something missing. They went to the window. Look, said Lily. There she is. And there. In the moonlit sky, they saw a swish of wings as the little owl made her way home. Happy Christmas, little owl, said Lily. The end. And right at the back of the book, if you want to purchase it, you can read you can see exactly where it happened in America with a family. And this was the photos they took of Rosie, their little Christmas owl. I hope you and your family have a lovely, lovely Christmas time together. And if you don't have your family with you, try and spend it with friends, people that you don't know, and bring them that Christmas cheer. Have a lovely, blessed day. I'll see you next time.